My dad planted the first orchard on blue gum in 64, so I've been involved in, in almonds my whole life. Born and raised on this property here, actually I've never lived anywhere else, and I am very blessed to have that opportunity. Learned a lot from an almond orchard, it's taught me how to work. Success didn't happen overnight. It has taken multiple generations to get where we're at today. I often think about us as surfers. When I think about a surfer, he goes out and tries to figure out where to catch that wave. We have done a lot to figure out why our product is healthy and what its attributes are. Research to figure out where to catch the wave. We've been extremely successful in marketing our crop, so we're very fortunate to have an excellent crop that's been well received, not only nationally, but also worldwide. I think the state of the industry is not only in a good place, but I think it's in a good place because of the fact that we've grasped opportunity throughout the ages of the almond industry. One of the key accomplishments and what's really led to the longevity of the industry is its ability to confront the agricultural challenges that we've had and be able to find a consistently profitable way to deal with those. We identify the language around sustainability was changing. And we looked at that and said, we need to pay attention to this. And we did, and we developed our California Almond Sustainability Program. We have accomplished a lot, but if we aren't looking out into the future, the environment is changing around us. If we don't adapt to what our consumers are asking for, in some way, shape, or form, they will leave us. And that's not where we want to be. I think the biggest challenge right now is water. What we know is that we're facing more variable climate. The projections are looking like there's just going to be more variability, and drier dries, wetter wets. And there's also going to be this need to go on a water diet to meet a law passed in 2014, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. In order to bring groundwater basins into balance, that means using less water, and that translates to about a half a million acres of California cropland coming out of production over time. After the water issue, we're experiencing issues with tariff and trade. And through the years, there's been issues with a disconnect between the consumer and the farmer. We're in a state with a population of almost 40 million people, and very few of them understand much about farming. So we have a challenge of running a farm, complying with regulations uh, in a state that's not necessarily farming or business friendly. I think the challenges of today are certainly different than they were in the past, but we're used to dealing with challenges. If you don't look out into the future, you'll get lost in the dust of yesterday. There are problems we're going to have to solve in the future that we're not even aware of yet, and it's going to take the next generation and continued research and innovation to solve those problems. The interesting thing about farming is we've always been able to pull our problems out of the fire. The next generation is not going to farm the way we are now. Just like we're not shaking almonds the way our fathers and our grandfathers did. There is a continual change. Farming is very much of a system. That system is evolving and we have to be ready for it. I served as the Secretary of Agriculture for five years. Interacted with 350 different crops hundreds of different ag organizations. The almond industry is extremely unique. I think there's a philosophy amongst the almond growers and the processors to really achieve being the best at what they can do. We've learned a lot from the past and that's really important, but I think our almond orchard goals for 2025 are a very good example of looking into the future and say, what are some of the challenges we're gonna face? Let's get ahead of them. I think the 20 years that are coming obviously are going to be transformational. The almond industry will need to certainly maintain the tenacity and the persistence that it's developed over the years. Focusing on that long-term vision and really living that vision every day. You know, making life better by what we grow and how we grow. My dream for my future is to someday raise a family on the land that I was raised on, the land that my dad was raised on, the land that my grandpa was raised on. That's my dream. It's very rewarding and it's 
it's nice to see that that legacy will continue. And that's four generations on the same street on Blue Gum Avenue here.